Getting started on today's Meetup Live event. This is a tour of the Meetup for Organizers app. Uh, I'm Alex Martin. I'm a lead on the community support team. I'm joined today by Colin Pierre, another lead on our community support team. Um, as we get started today, uh, if you've joined our Meetup Live events before, you're probably familiar with these guidelines, but we'd like to run through it every time so that we all know what to expect. Uh, this video will be recorded. Uh, you will not be appearing in the video, and we will be sending the link uh, in a recording. It's going to be included in a recap that we post on the Meetup Community Matters blog within a few days. We'll be posting that link uh, probably in the chat or in the Q&A throughout the presentation today, so keep an eye out for that. Um, your audio has been courtesy muted during this event. If you do have questions that come up, uh, there is a Q&A chat box available at the bottom of your Zoom window. You can submit your questions there. We have support specialists on the line throughout the presentation to answer some of your questions via uh, responses in your chat. Otherwise, uh, we will have a section at the end of our presentation today where we will answer some questions live. Uh, last but not least, uh, closed captioning is available. To turn it on, click the live transcription icon at the bottom of your screen and select your preference. All right, today, um, after we finish our introduction here, we're going to talk you through some new and upcoming features on Meetup that we're excited to share with you. The meat and potatoes of our presentation today will be Colin demonstrating a live demo of the Meetup for Organizers app. Um, and last but not least, as I promised, we will have a Q&A session at the end. What we're going to talk about today is how you can download log in and set up the Meetup for Organizers app, how you can create an event within the app, and Colin will be showing us uh, a live demonstration of how to do that. Uh, we'll show you how you can contact your members, new features that are available, and uh, a really important thing as members of the community support team, we want to make sure you know how to send us feedback and requests for additional features, as well as how to reach out to our support team for assistance using the app and the website. So. Um, first, I wanted to start with a question. We're going to be sharing a poll. Uh, we want to know if you've already downloaded the Meetup for Organizers app. Hearing feedback from people using the app is the best way that we have to learn um, how we want to update it, what new features we want to roll out and why. Um, part of this poll is going to include, if you've already downloaded it, please let us know. And if you haven't, let us know why you haven't. If you're more comfortable using the original app, if you're waiting for new updates, uh, if you don't like to plan events on your phone at all, um, or if you have other reasons for not downloading the app, in which case you can share your answers in uh, the chat. So um, we'll leave that poll up for uh, a few moments uh, earlier in the presentation. For now, as people are uh, submitting their responses, I think we can move on to the next slide. Um, and... Great, now um, we are gonna talk about some of those new and upcoming features. Um, all right, so first and foremost, um, I, I mean, a lot of what we're gonna talk about today with the Meetup for Organizers app is creating events. It's sort of like the primary feature of Meetup itself. You wanna be meeting your group members and hosting events. And one of the uh, biggest challenges in creating new events, especially if you are a new organizer is what do you fill out for event descriptions? How do you get all of the pieces together into the event scheduler to create that event? We're trying to make that easier for everybody with this meet and greet template. It's a template that will auto-populate a lot of the fields in the event scheduler. We'll give you, you know, a featured photo, uh, a title. We'll give you some, some uh, a leg up on, on creating this event. Um, the meet and greet, I think, is a really great opportunity to invite new members into your group and to meet. Um, and for that reason, it's not just useful for new organizers, but seasoned organizers can also use this template to sort of get a boost uh, if you feel that uh, member joints have sort of stagnated or you want to get new blood into your community. Um, also, we have uh, an event search map going live. You'll be able to take a peek at in-person events in your area. So this map um, shows you, you see these little uh, red indicators telling you where events are in your area. Um, when you click on them, it will identify which ones you've already viewed. 
um, and you can use your device's location to center your position. This is sort of an interesting way to figure out what new things you can try, what new groups you can test out, um, and keeping it local so that you don't have to travel far in order to find your community. Um, and we've recently launched uh, group fundraising. We used to have a feature called contributions, which we had to deactivate a few years ago. This is a comparable replacement for that feature. We've partnered with a company called Pledge. They're a payment processing platform. Excuse me, that's a lot of alliteration. Um, and it enables you to set up optional donations for your group. So rather than required member dues, which sometimes, you know, creates a barrier for entry if you're trying to invite new members in, you can set up a fundraising campaign. It'll be posted on uh, uh, your group homepage or your event homepage. You can select either or or both. Um, and uh, you can set your fundraising goal. And it allows people to submit uh, directly to uh, your account optionally as a way to continue supporting the kind of events that your group is hosting. Right now, it's only available in the US, um, but uh, you should be seeing prompts when you log into the app to, to get that set up for your group. So those are the new and upcoming features right now. Um, and our, we have a fourth bullet point on this slide here. We kind of want to tease another upcoming feature, which is that very soon we will have event chat going live so that once your event starts, if you need to have like up to the minute communication, if people are running late, if you want to tell people that things are changing, you'll be able to have that live communications uh, tool available to you. So new and upcoming features coming up. All right. Thanks for uh, your time and letting us tease some of the new stuff that we've got coming out. And now let's get into the, the real purpose of our meeting today, which is the Meetup for Organizers app. First, we're going to show you where you can go to download it and how to set it up. Um, so these screenshots will show you a little glimpse of what the Meetup for Organizer app is going to look like. If you scan this QR code or go to the link that Emily has posted in chat, uh, you'll be taken to a landing page where you can download this app uh, for either uh, the Android or iOS device that you happen to be using. Uh, I want to leave this slide up on the screen for a couple moments here. We want to make sure that you've got your phones ready, that you can download this app if you don't have it already. Uh, personally, I, I learn by doing. So uh, if you're here to learn how to use the Meetup for Organizers app, we want to make sure you have an opportunity to get that set up so that you can follow along with Colin's presentation when he gets started. Um, this QR code will be presented a couple of times throughout our presentation today. So if you miss this particular slide, don't panic. Um, again, Emily's posted the link into the chat, so you'll be able to find it there, and we can always share it again throughout the presentation, and again, the QR code will pop up again. So let's move on to the next slide. All right, here we go. Navigating the Meetup for Organizers app, I am going to talk us through what we can expect from this demonstration before I hand it off to Colin. Like I promised, here's that QR code again. If you haven't had a chance to download it yet, um, please make sure you've got your phones on hand, you've got the app set up, that you're ready to walk through it with us. Colin is going to show us about navigation, creating events, and managing events. I know these are a lot of bullet points that we're seeing on the slide right now. This is sort of an indication of how robust this app can be and how much it's going to be able to do to make uh, hosting and creating your events uh, as convenient as possible for you. Uh, we're really proud of the idea that this app is going to allow you to manage your events on the go so that uh, you don't have to sort of like have a home base for planning it that you can be out and about and still like easily planning your your events for your community. Uh, so uh, with setting up the app with creating events and managing events, uh, we'll take a look at that now. Um, and I'm going to hand it off to Colin, who's going to show us a live demonstration of the Meetup for Organizers app. Colin. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Colin. I work on the community support team here at Meetup, and I'm super excited to show you about the Meetup for Organizers app. Uh, a couple, uh, what was it, a month, a couple months ago, we we announced the app. We we had a Meetup Live, but we've added more features since. So I want to show you um, all the things you can do right now. So, um, like Alex said, definitely scan that and get the app downloaded. I'm going to take over screen sharing and share on my my um, phone here. So just give me one second. <clears throat> okay. 
take over. All righty, so I'm gonna go to the, my, we have our uh, original member app and we now we have the Meetup for Organizers app. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you open it, obviously you'll need to log in, but you'll want to log in with your organizer account credentials because this app is not available to members. So you need to be on the leadership team of a group in order to access this app. So I'm going to log in with my, my real meetup account, my real meetup group. And cool. All right. So once you're logged in, I just want to welcome you to the Meetup for Organizers app. Uh, this is your group overview page where you can see at the top, you know, your group name. You've got your group's location. And then you have the number of members in your group here. I have 249 yogis. I have this yoga group. And um, if you tap the, uh, the number of members, it will bring you to your member uh, list. Now notice that this, um, this page brings you to the mobile web version. And we haven't yet built a native experience for the event list in, in the Meet Up for Organizers app, but we wanted to make sure that you still have access in the meantime on managing uh, your members. You can, you know, remove them, add them, change roles, etc. Um, so that, but native uh, group, uh, member management is coming soon. And then we have uh, the contact members uh, button right at the top there. Now I'm on an iPhone, so it's asking me um, how I would want to contact all of my, the members of my group. <clears throat> and uh, here I'm just going to click Gmail and notice that the uh, the email address automatically generates the group's mailing list. And, uh, but I just wanna call out that if you want to send a, a message to all of your group members, you wanna make sure that you change the email address that's associated with your Meetup account. Because if you send an email address, or if you send a message from an email address that's not, it won't go through. So obviously use the uh, email that you use to log in. Um, so that's uh, the contact members feature. But let's go back to the app. And then we also have the group settings. This also brings you to um, the mobile web experience, but you can still you know, edit your group settings here. Um, we don't have it yet built natively, but that's also coming. Cool, so that's um, at the top there. And then you have your event list. You see your upcoming, your draft, and your past events here. Um, at the bottom, there are a bunch of hosting tips. Uh, these all link to our Community Matters blog. Just helps you kind of get some good advice for how to be a successful meetup organizer. And then in the upper left, you see the four dots. You tap that, you, um, you'll see uh, multiple groups if you're the organizer or on the leadership team of multiple groups. Now for this account, I just organized this one group. So I only see this one, but if you did have more, you'd see a list of them here. And then lastly, uh, you have your profile icon in the upper right. And here it gives you, you know, your account information. You can connect your Zoom account. Um, and then we have a support section. So if you, if you are experiencing a bug or have questions about the app, you can contact support. And then you can also share feedback and feature requests, which we're always looking for. And of course, log out if you need to. Cool, so that's just kind of an overview of the navigation. Um, I do want to get more into uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of the whole point of this app, which is creating events and managing your events. So back on your group page, <clears throat> you see the red plus sign in the lower right-hand corner. When you tap that, um, there's two options. You can create a new event or you could copy an event. So let's go ahead and we're gonna create a new event by tapping the plus sign. So this is the event scheduler where you can input all of your event details. So I'm gonna create a new event. And since this is a, a yoga group, I'm going to make a new event called Yoga in the Park. Save that. 
And for the event location, you can choose whether the event will be in person or online. Uh, you can even include the online event URL if it's an online event, or you could connect your Zoom account. But for this event, um, I'm going to choose in person. Um, and let's say we're going to do it at Prospect Park in Brooklyn. And I want to edit the map pin here to select you know, the field that we're going to be doing yoga in right around the dog park. And I'll also add a how to find us um, little section here. Um, let's just say, you know, meet outside the gate. You can even say, call me. Just any information for them, to, for your members to help you find the location. I'll save that. Once you have all of your event location info, just save it in the upper right. Cool. And then we have the uh, date and time. So let's say um, I'm gonna, let's do yoga next week, you know, two weekends from now on the third, and we'll have it start at 12 o'clock. No, let's say 11 o'clock, not too late. And then we'll have it maybe end an hour later. Hour yoga is plenty, <laughs> save it. And then we can add your event description. Do you notice here that there's a bunch of formatting tools if you want? You can bold, italicize, you can add um, bullets, you can add numbering, and you can also add hyperlinks. So I'm just gonna, you know, you can add it as you want, but I'm just gonna do an easy uh, description for now. Um, and then you can preview it. So if you have any hyperlinks or anything, it will show as the preview here. And then you also have your featured photo. So you can add a featured photo from your camera roll, or if you have recent featured photos, I have a bunch here that I've used in the past. So I'll just select this, this fun yoga picture. And then at the bottom, we have all of these optional settings. Um, the first one is the COVID-19 safety measures. So um, this allows you to tell your members that masks or the vaccine is required and whether the event will be held indoors or outdoors. Um, so let's just say the vaccine's required and we're gonna, the venue will be outdoors. Let me save that. The repeat event feature is actually exclusive to the organizer app. It's not available in the member app, um, but it allows you to set the event to repeat every month, every two weeks, every week, et cetera. Um, but I'm just gonna keep this off. I'm just gonna have it as a one-time event for now. And then you have the ask members a question. So maybe I'll ask them their skill level with yoga. So what's your yoga skill level? And when they answer this question, you'll be able to see the answer on the um, attendee list in the app. Then we have the um, add or change host feature. So if you want to add additional hosts, you can search for a member in your group and then make them a co-host. But I'm not going to add anyone for now. I'll just, I'll just lead it myself. Then we have the attendee limit. Um, this lets you cap the number of members who can RSVP to your event. Um, but for this event, I'm just going to keep it off because it's outdoors. There'll be plenty of space. We also I'm gonna keep it off, save. And then we have um, the allow guests feature. Um, let's just say people can bring up to like five guests, why not? And then we have RSVP start and end time. So here you can set the event to open or close RSVPs at a certain time. Um, so there's the RSVP start time and end time, you can set it and if, if this is on, then members won't be able to RSVP until these times arrive. Um, I'll just keep this off because they can RSVP anytime. And the last optional feature is the event fee. Um, if you'd like to charge your members, you can set the payment method to direct from members or uh, PayPal. You'll have to make sure that your PayPal account is, is set up and linked to your account. 
Um, this feature is not available in the original Meetup app. It's exclusive to the organizer app. So we're super excited about this. This is something <laughs> you all have asked for. Um, but I'm going to keep this one off and just want it to be a free yoga event. Cool. So I've added all of the event details, um, but let's say I'm not quite ready to publish the event yet. You can save the event as a draft by, by tapping save as draft at the bottom. And then it will appear right in your draft list. Um, now, if you want, let's say you maybe want to delete the draft, you can just tap it. And then in the upper right, there's an option to save it or discard the draft um, if you want to completely get rid of it. But if you're ready to publish it, let's just go down and hit publish. And great. OK, so you've just created an event on the organizer app. Um, and after you publish it, you'll have the option to announce it now or do it later. Um, when you announce it, an email will be sent to all members and a, a push notif uh, if, they're, if they are subscribed to receive emails um, and have notifications on. You know. I'm going to do this later. Um, when you um, schedule the event, you'll be taken right to the event page. It kind of gives you an overview. It shows that it's unannounced. If you tap the unannounced, you can choose to announce it. Um, and then there's the share icon in the upper right where you can share it externally with your um, family, friends, your network. Cool. So that's kind of that's um, the overview of how to uh, create an event. Now. Um, we know that managing events, once you sc schedule them and you have upcoming events and even past events, you want to uh, manage them and, and be able to edit and um, just um, make sure that everything's, uh, everything's all set for your upcoming events. So I'm gonna, uh, I I'm gonna show you how to, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different options for managing. So let's go back to the event um, group overview page, and you can see a bunch of your upcoming events. Uh, so if you tap see all upcoming events at, at the bottom of the list, you can search for any upcoming event you have, or just maybe select one from the list. So there's an event happening today, later today at six for my yoga group. So maybe tap the first one and um, you can see all the event details and everyone who's coming. So if you tap the going section, it will bring you to our new native experience where you can view and manage your attendees. Now, if a member is attending an event for the first time, you'll see uh, the first event tag, and you can also see if they're bringing guests. You can also search, <clears throat> search for a member to mark them as going or not going. So let's say Alex, um, Alex currently is not going, but let's move him to going. He's gonna join me at yoga today. And you can also sort, there's a, there's a filter and sort option here. This is the filter you can filter by if the member is a host or if they're bringing guests. You can also sort by um, the most recent response or alphabetically. And if anyone has said that they're not going, then you can flip over to see that. Now in the upper right-hand corner, there's the three dots and this will let you close the event for RSVPs. So no one will be able to RSVP anymore. You can edit the guest limit, there's edit attendee limit. These are all things that are managing the event optional settings. Cool. Let's go back to the event page and um, maybe uh, you realize that even though there's a, there, you have your event scheduled for um, you know, an hour today, maybe you wanna extend it for, by you know, 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> so on your event page, you can tap manage event. And from here, you have a big list of uh, what you can do with the event, you can edit it. If you tap view edit, uh, view event in Meetup app, it will open the original Meetup app. And you can see your member's perspective of what it looks like. You can feature the event, close for RSVPs, copy event, cancel, and delete. Um, for now, let's, let's edit it. 
Now, this is a reminder that I am editing the event from a series because this event is a repeat event. And any changes I make to this event will only be applied to this one event. So it's just a, a reminder about that. Cool, so it brings me to the event scheduler. And you can make any edits here, but for this one, maybe I'm gonna change the time to be a, a little later. We're gonna do yoga a little longer today. So I'll extend it by 15 minutes <clears throat> and then I'll save and publish. Now, a super useful feature on the organizer app is the ability to copy an event. So I'm gonna go back to my group page here. Let's say I have a past event that I really enjoyed. Um, and instead of recreating it from scratch, I just wanna copy all of the details and publish it. You, I would just change the, the time and date. So here on the past event list, Maybe I'll tap CL past events and I can go back in history and just pick whichever one. I can also search at the top if I, if I know exactly which one I'm looking for. Let's do this one. So we have all these details here and instead of recreating it from scratch, I'll just tap manage event. I can copy event and it has all the details. All I need to do is change the event, and event date and time. So we'll just put it, you know, in the future. Cool. And then I'll, and then I'll publish it. And again, I can uh, announce it now or later. So voila, yeah, there you go. That's uh, how to copy a past event. Um, that's a definitely a useful feature. Um, so yeah, I hope that was uh, uh, really helpful to kind of be walked through all these uh, features in the app. We're always looking for ways to improve it. And um, so if there's something that you found, um, you know, either helpful, confusing, or if something doesn't exist, and, and you really think it would be beneficial in the app, then feel free to let us know. Uh, because we want to make this as, as seamless as possible for y'all. Um, so yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Thank you, Colin. <clears throat> let's see all right and we are back in our presentation i've got one more announcement about an upcoming feature i want to share now that we've taken a look at the app uh, and this is the sort of thing like colin was saying like uh, hearing from people using the app is the way that we learn what we should prioritize needs to be built next and this is an example of that uh, pretty soon we're going to be launching a check-in feature so that you can uh, keep track of attendance in real time with the organizer app. Uh, so you can mark people as checked in or absent, you can flag no-shows, you can edit guest counts, and we're trying to build it to be uh, a really you know, powerful, robust feature for when you've got boots on the ground at your event and you want to be managing your attendance. Um, so just to, again, to, to reiterate, this is... Um, uh, a feature that we built because people were using the app and telling us what they wanted to see. Um, so along those lines, um, I uh, will uh, be, sorry, we're trying to arrange what questions we're going to be answering live. I think we're ready to move on from this slide. Um, great. Okay. So next we're going to talk about ways that you can tell us uh, the things that you're looking for, questions you have. Uh, we will be doing the Q&A immediately after this slide, but we want to make sure you've got access to the resources so that you can continue communicating with us after this presentation. So first of all, uh, to request things like that event check-in feature, you want to use the product feature request form. You can directly submit requests to our product team. Uh, Emily is sharing the direct links to the QR codes that you're seeing on the screen that's uh, in the chat right now. Um, if you don't have requests to make, but you want to stay up to date on what we're launching and what's coming uh, down the way, uh, you, you can always uh, check our product updates page on our Community Matters blog. If you have questions about using, navigating, succeeding with the Meetup for Organizers app or with Meetup generally, um, our Help Center has lots and lots and lots of resources for doing that. Um, the bottom of each Help Center page has a link so that you can submit a direct request to our community support team. 
Um, and last but not least, if something seems like it's going wrong, if you are encountering error messages, uh, that sort of thing, you can submit a bug and that helps us get you in touch with specialists who can do troubleshooting with you even faster. Um, we can always put this slide back up later, but first let's get into the Q&A. We've been getting lots of great questions. I want to thank everybody for uh, adding questions to our Q&A. Uh, there's two questions I want to start off with. We've gotten a couple of people asking about this. Um, first and foremost, we've gotten questions about what we mean when we say native experience in the app. Um, and, and Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we're talking about that, what we mean is that it's actually built into the app itself rather than pushing you into the mobile web experience or pushing you into the member app. Usually if you click on something and it's taking you outside of the Metaphor Organizers app, that's an indication of our roadmap about what we're going to be building next. Uh, and we're trying to emphasize like everything that exists internally, natively within the Metaphor Organizers app now. Um, and second, I want to address some questions we got about repeating events. Uh, there are some features in the event scheduler that unlock when you select the date and time for an individual event. Repeating events is one of them. So if you're not seeing that option in the event scheduler in the Meetup for Organizers app, try selecting a date and time for your event, and then scroll down to your optional features, and you should see uh, repeating options there. So you can select weekly, you can select monthly, you've got some options to play with there. I think there's a couple of other things that unlock when you have date and time. Isn't that right, Colin? Yeah, when you um, select the date and time, you'll be able to... Um... It's uh, which one? Which one? It's a few optional settings. There's the oh, the RSVP start and end time will show up, and then also the repeat event uh, option. Those will show up. Great, cool. All right, um, we've got some additional questions that we will start tackling now. Um, First and foremost, we've got uh, Creating Connection asks, what about Pro integration? Is that coming anytime soon? Um, pro local organizers, I believe, should have access to the Meetup for Organizers app since uh, you have access to your organizer tools. If you're a pro administrator and you're trying to get access to your pro dashboard, for now, that is only still available on uh, the desktop experience. Um, but if that's a feature that you'd like to see integrated into the Meetup for Organizers app, that'd be a great thing to submit as a feature request. Um, all right. Um, Debbie asks, can we pre-post out more than monthly events, one time a year, biannually, every three months? This is a big problem for me. They keep getting jammed and they're repeating. Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, it's how far out you can schedule repeating events. Um, and I, I, I think I addressed this a little bit before that if you create an event and you select the date and time, you can select how often those events repeat. Um, and you can always schedule events individually in the future if you want to make them a little bit more bespoke or a little bit more specific about what each event in the future you're planning out for. I think. Um, yeah, I th that, exactly. I think Debbie's also asking about the ability to um, schedule a repeat event uh, like annually or biannually or like more more customized repeat. Um, because right now in the organizer app, the three options are every month, every two weeks and every week. Um, and so those are the only three um, default like options that you can select. So we don't right now have the ability to schedule a repeat event like every year so or, or biannually etc but that's a great feature request thanks for asking that debbie great um and thank you colin um kathy asks a really great question which isn't specific to the meetup for organizers app but i think is a really important thing just for being a member of a community and for being an organizer or a member of a leadership team community with meetup kathy asked what should members do when a head organizer has left a group. Um, our help center has some information about this. Uh, if, if an organizer has stepped down, um, they have an opportunity to select another member of the group to step up. Um, subscriptions cannot be transferred. So if that organizer has stepped down, they cannot transfer their subscription, what they've paid for, to another member. 
the, the new organizer will have to pay for their own subscription if they haven't set up one already to lead other groups. Um, but uh, if there is no organizer and the previous organizer has not selected another member to take over the group, you should see a button on the group homepage that invites you to step up as the organizer, to set up your own subscription and to take over the group. Um, uh, we can get the Help Center article for that process if you're interested. And it, part of the tricky thing about the question you're asking, Kathy, is that as a member of the group, sometimes the options that you have available to you are a little bit more uh, limited because the previous organizer had more control over the group and they have the opportunity to select somebody else specifically to take over. Um, but if nobody gets selected, you do have that opportunity. You'll see on the group homepage where you can always step in and take over. Um, I see um, I see a couple of people, I think we just talked about this, but some people are saying, I do not see the option to repeat event in my app. Um, and, we, and what we just were talking about was, um, that you need to set the event date and time before you see those options. So I think Sa Saeed and uh, Frank asked that, um, but just make sure that you have the events date and time set and then you'll see those options. Um, Than asks, if I use the new app, will all my posts also appear on the, lap on the laptop view account? Uh, and the answer is yes. Anything that you post to your group uh, any events that you schedule with your group using the Meetup for Organizers app will be reflected on every other version of Meetup. Your desktop version, the laptop version, mobile web, the member app, you should see the exact same events both saved and published once once you set them up in the Meetup for Organizers app. So it's a great question. Um, seal the deal. Seal. Um, I seal. <laughs> I seal. Uh, why does the Zoom link disappear when the meetup starts? Latecomers, even those who notice me, can't join. They only see the words online event and it makes them upset. This sounds like it should not be happening. Um, this uh, Members should always see the online event link, especially when the event starts. So you'll be able to see it up until the end of the event. Once the event ends, then it disappears. But you should members should always be able to see the uh, online event link. Um, so definitely contact our, our, um, our support team and we can definitely look into that, into why that's happening for your group. Okay. Terry asked if there's a way to re-announce a, a meetup event. Sometimes mine are announced way in advance. Um, so there isn't a specific way to re-announce. Once it's announced, it's, it's announced. We've sent out the announcements. However, we do have an automatic event reminder notification system. So that's seven days and one day before. Uh, members of your group are being notified that the event has been scheduled and that they still have an opportunity to RSVP. Um, you can learn more about announcing events in the Help Center. We've got a, a really robust article on announcing your events. And as Colin demonstrated, when you publish an event, you do get prompted to decide if you want to announce it right away as soon as you publish, or if you want to hold off and do it manually a little closer to the event. If you wait too soon to the event, those event reminders are going to kick in and automatically send out the reminders at seven days and one day before. Um, the other nuance to this is if you've scheduled a repeating event, and I don't think you have the option to manually announce repeating events because they're standard. Like People expect that those events are happening at certain dates and times because that's how often they happen. But even with those, the automatic event reminders are still going out. I have a question from Donna. Is the fundraising feature only on the organizers app? Can I turn it on in the original desktop version? So the fundraising feature, um, it's, it's um, the best way to use it right now is through the original desktop version because it's not natively built into the Meetup for Organizers app yet. However, you can access that group setting. So when you go open your organizer app, tap group settings, and it will bring you to the mobile web uh, view. Um, and then at the very bottom, scroll to the bottom, you'll see the fundraising part of group settings, and you can edit uh, your fundraising there. Um, but again, it's not, you know, we've been talking about native, you know, the native part of the app, not built into it quite yet, um, but definitely utilize it through um, desktop um, or mobile web. Okay. Um, 
I've got some questions about some of the new and upcoming features that I teased. Um, and I'm going to try to do my best to answer these, but because they haven't quite gone live yet, there's some possibility, like we don't want to like over promise and guarantee anything about features that haven't launched yet. But um, two questions we've gotten. Naomi has asked if the checked in feature will be available on the web if you don't use your phones for events. Um, frankly, I'm not sure about the answer to this question. Colin, do you have a I, sense of this? I, um, it will definitely be launched um, on the Meetup for Organizers app first. And um, we're, we're not sure exactly if and when it will be on the web. I think that's, that's, um, that's my understanding. So this is another reason why we wanted to be uh, proactive about sharing and promoting the Meetup for Organizers app is because some features we want to make sure that organizers have sort of exclusive access to through the app because we want to try to prioritize that sort of convenience and on-the-go management for your events. Um, and Davis had another question about an upcoming event asking, will it be possible to opt out or turn off the upcoming event chat feature? Um, there's a concern about moderation of comments and having to monitor that chat on every page uh, could be a challenge. Um, uh, and if the answer is no, will we be able to flag as inappropriate to report uh, uh, messages in that event chat? It's a great question. Um, Colin, do you want to speak to that? I could try. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm not sure about the ability to turn on or off event chat. However, I do know that there's definitely the ability to report uh, chats and anything in the chat itself, um, but that is a really great idea. I uh, we've heard for so for so long that people want event chat, so we should also consider those who might not want it. Um, so thanks for asking. Um, I, I mean, I know that we've built in for uh, discussions that you can moderate whether they're on or off. So um, we try to like be mindful of the fact that organizers are going to want to have control over which communication channels your members are using. Um, so if it does launch and you don't see the ability to turn off the event chat feature, that's an excellent reason to submit one of our feature requests. Um, Eva asks, uh, on my iPad, the classic app won't turn to landscape mode. Is that going to be possible on the organizer app? Um, I, I don't believe we have any uh, plans to optimize the app for iPads or to make it function particularly in landscape mode on iPad. It's designed for phones and like uh, as we showed with the landing page like you can download it for your Android or your iOS phone devices. Um, if uh, and once again if iPad um, management of your events through the app is something that's really important to you that sort of feedback is really really crucial to us and we want to make sure that you have the ability to request it. I've seen a couple requests for iPad support um, uh, for the Meetup for Organizers app. So um, definitely submit that that to us, Eva. Um, and please share, like, uh, we'd love to hear, like, why that would be helpful. Um, looks like Jennifer submitted a question. OK, she said, Jennifer says, if I am an organizer of a Meetup group and a member of other Meetup groups, will I need to download both apps? Can I have the organizer app features for the group I organize and the member app features for the groups that I'm a member of in the same app? So um, I think, we, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so the question is around if we can consolidate everything into one app. <laughs> and that's what we've actually done for a long time. And it hasn't, it's actually held us back a lot. Uh, we, we found that a lot of features that organizers need and, and use um are just it's more beneficial to have in a designated app um but i've heard a couple people say um that they want access to both you know they're because they're you know they're an organizer for a group but they're also a member um but that's good feedback uh right now we have these two different apps um but definitely want to hear more about why you, why that would be beneficial to have two different ones yeah, the mindset, just one, just one. The, the, the mindset it's always seemed to me as we're launching this app is that we want to make sure that organizers have like a, a, a really um, convenient and like fast moving 
set of tools for managing their events, which is why we're creating this separate app that can run without carrying all of the other information for members as well. Um, but I do understand the, the request about like trying to consolidate that. Um, these are uh, such great questions. I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today, for sharing your questions, and uh, and for for uh, downloading and using the Meetup for Organizers app. Uh, we are at time, um, so we're going to take you through a couple of last slides just to give you some uh, resources to take a look at. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a QR code for an invitation to our Meetup organizer community on Discord. If you're unfamiliar with Discord, it is a, a live messaging platform, and we've set up a community where organizers can communicate with other organizers, share success tips, ask each other questions about what really works with their groups, what tools they're using in order to host successful events. Um, we have uh, Meetup organizer mentors who are uh, answering questions and working directly with new organizers to support them. Uh, we're really excited about launching this resource and we're gonna continue um, sort of uh, growing and developing it. So we wanna make sure you have an opportunity to join if you wanna partner with other uh, organizers. Um, and uh, here uh, you can subscribe to the Meetup podcast, keep connected with our CEO, David Siegel. Um, and... I believe that's it for today. Um, so I'll thank everybody once again for joining us. Um, and uh, Emily has been posting links in the chat. I believe we've got one last link that we're posting, which is if you didn't get a chance to download the app using the QR code, we'll be posting that link uh, here. And it's also available in the Google Play Store or in the iOS app store. Um, so uh, you can always access it even without these links. So thank you again and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. Thanks everyone. Take care.